So, Julian Landes. Hi. Tell me Hi. about your film. I want to know how it all started. Your interest, your I, casting. Yes, I've always been very romantic with the big R. I love the dark 19th century, and so I, I discovered that novel by Henry James through a French writer who adapted it for the theater, and uh, I thought it was an incredible subject. Yeah, it's the story of uh, a young writer who's obsessed by a poet called Aspern, who's in fact Lord Byron, and who 60 years after the death of the poet learns one of his mistresses is still alive and is a very old lady who lives in a Venetian palazzo with her niece, whom she dominates. And um, he tries to seduce Denise to get the letters of the old lady, but he's not aware that he's being manipulated, and not the contrary. So it's a film about fantasy, as that, that old woman who's played by Vanessa Redgrave um, was called Claire Clermont, was both the mistress of Lord Byron, who was bisexual, and forming a three-way couple with Percy and Mary Shelley. So the whole quest for the papers, the, the letters, the quest of uh, a search for uh, free love, sexual freedom, and the desire to, to, to live a life of adventure that so many people can bring themselves to live. And how did the casting come about? Yes, so the, the lead role is Jonathan Rhys Myers, who plays the Morton Finn, the young writer obsessed by Aspern. Vanessa Redgrave is playing um, Juliana Bordero, the, the old mistress of, uh, of Aspern. Um, and her, her daughter Jolie Richardson plays Miss Tina, the, her niece whom he will seduce. And then in his quest for the letters he's advised by high society ladies and uh, among them there is Papi, Papi Delevingne and Morgan Polanski. And uh, the poet Aspern is played by Jen Colta Yarena and Percy Shelley by Nicholas Howe. And how did it come about that James Ivory was involved? Yes, James, James Ivory is executive producer of the film because uh, James wanted to adapt the Aspirin papers six years ago. As you know, he's, he's uh, adapted many Henry James novels, like the Bostonians and the Ambassadors. And um, finally, his co-writer with Jabbala died and he never did it. And we met through com common friends in Venice and he was very excited uh, to, to read my version of the Aspirin papers and mine his. And so we started collaborating together. And, um, yeah, it was a, an incredible encounter. And what about? Total coincidence. <laughs> Everything's a coincidence here. Yes, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And meeting Vanessa Redgrave, that came about by her daughter. Yes, yes. I, I had thought about Jerry Richardson at first when I was Tina. So I just um, proposed her through her agent. And, or he just called me to say, telling me Jody was very interested in telling me and hearing about the, my vision of the story. And when I met Jody, she told she she told me, "Have you proposed to to Vanessa?" Because uh, and I said no. And she said, "Because uh, ten ten days before I received your script, she gave me that book to read, the Aspen Papers, saying it would be such a great part for you." <laughs> And then I realized that actually Sir Michael Redgrave had adapted the same novel for the theater, and that Vanessa Redgrave had played Miss Tina 30 years ago at the Haymarket Theater in London with Christopher Reeves. <laughs> so it was kind of a family story. And, um, and so, uh, but then I had to convince them of my vision, it was very different from Sir Michael Redgrave's. <laughs> and I, I was, uh, and I did, sorry. <laughs> and they were very, so we were very keen to, um, collaborating and, and acting together because they had never really acted together too and uh, and then of course Vanessa was very happy that when I had met James Ivory he was part of the project project as uh, yeah he gave her some of her best roles at Howard Zeno at the best audience. <laughs> but it was an, another coincidence <laughs> wow yeah it's like a golden wand is over this film yes Yes. <laughs> and who's the cinematographer? He's called Philippe Gilbert. He's Belgian. He's very, very talented. He's, an, he's a great human being and he does an incredible light. And, uh, and he came up every day with different ideas of framing. And we had a great, great relationship in a very, in very difficult conditions. We had to shoot in 18 days <laughs> in Venice. <laughs> so working six days a week. Like, and, uh, yeah, I was hours a day <laughs> so it's incredible the, the amount of coverage we managed to have and, but I had extraordinary, extraordinary reactors as well so 18 days that's extremely yes. short no? yes <laughs> wow. should a feature film yes it is
That's insane. Yes. And it took quite 15 weeks to edit? Yes, exactly. And who's exactly. the editor? It's called Hans-Jörg Weisbrich. Yes, he, he had a lot of awards for, for Billy August's films. And uh, he's also very, very talented. He was, uh, was a musician as well, so that's an incredible sense of reason. And so are you. Yes, yes, I'm a pianist as well. I did electronic music. Yeah, I heard a yes. little <laughs> private concert a long time ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And how did you get Dr. Ngabana and Bulgaria into it? Yes, um, I ch <coughs> there's a, story, a whole story about the, um, about the ring. That came about uh, when I heard about Tracy Shelley's ring, when he was found dead in a beach in Viareggio, which is the beginning of my film. Shelley had, had that incredible and kind of Roman in tie. And I thought that would have been an interesting idea that my main character, Asper, like Shelley, um, ha had a very special ring and that it would be worn by his mistress as a remembrance and that that ring would be transmitted from generation to generation to the Germans. And uh, so I met an Elizabeth at Bulgarian Orient Express from Prague to Venice. <laughs> and she was very interested in the project. Stefan Gershel was working in Bulgaria at the time. And, uh, and yeah, we decided then to, 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 to create a partnership. And what about Dr. And our, and Gabbana? And um, yes, I, I, as you know, I've always worked with a lot of fashion brands on my films. But I think that there's a craftsmanship that's absolutely unique. Uh, um, that we don't find very often in the in cinema. <laughs> Except, of course, for the geniuses like Miguel Macabonero. <laughs> but, um, and uh, I, in 2006, I had, I, I had seen that incredible campaign by Steven Meisel from Dolce Gabbana. It's like uh, First Empire embroidered jackets and uh, Josephine the on his dresses. And I thought, and then, of course, the, my main character from Vanessa Place is an old widow who wears a, 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 a black veil and is wrapped in different materials. And I thought, well, we, I'm in Italy and well, Dolce Gabbana's creation would be absolutely incredible. For me. So, so I sent them the project and they really liked it. To so me, they had never participated in a film like that before, but that they were very happy to open their, their archives so for me uh, and adjust them for the film. So. So a very uh, short amount of time, and so that's how it all got together. And your sister, did she work on the film? Yes, no, not on this one, unfortunately. Ah. She couldn't. Yeah. Really? Yes. No. Yes. Oh, well. I was very sad. <laughs> so when do we think uh, we're going to be able to see the film? So it's going to be released in the U.S. in August, September 2018, and um, we're going to premiere it at the big festivals next year. Right. So it should be, should be released in Europe around the same time, for the fall. No way of seeing some Russians prior to that? Yes, of course you could have a private screening. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.